Namaste to all of you. Today, Aishwati Singh is going to give you a presentation on the topic Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Arjun's dilemma. Srimad Bhagavad Gita is a dialogue between Arjun and Sri Krishna in the midst of the battlefield of Kurukshetra. It opens with the question of King Dhritarashtra to his minister Sanjay. After gathering with the desire of war on the land of Dharma, that is Kurukshetra, what did my and Pandu sense to? This question reflects the alienation and biases by the king, thereby reflecting the strength of the rift within the royal family. This paper looks into Arjun's dilemma and tries to understand the cause of the grief and the solutions given by Sri Krishna. It is important as Arjun's dilemma are the veils of ignorance impacting the knowledge, understanding and decision-making skills in the mortal world dominated by illusions. Due to insufficient un understanding of morality and lack of higher knowledge, finding oneself under the influence of, the, of some wrong habits or opinions trapped in an unavoidable and undesirable situations, a person steps back from the taking required measures essential for greater good. Hence, to find a solution to our problems in life, it is fruitful to undergo this analysis. Arjun requested Sri Krishna to take his chariot in the midst of the battlefield for a better observation in order to win the war. But what he saw were not his enemies, but his relatives, his entire clan. This was a moment when he did not long for victory, but was ready to give up irrespective of the consequences. According to him, by killing Dhritarashtra's sons, he won't get any pleasure. He will be a sinner by killing his own clan. And since uh, Pandavas are the wiser and responsible ones, therefore they must not commit such a sin. His grief transforms from family loss to loss of values and morality, and ultimately the fall of uh, people's character and virtues in a society, transforming the civilized society into an uncivilized one. Arjun thus casts aside his bow and arrow and sits on his chariot while discarding his Kshatriya duties for a while. With the thoughts of killing the loved ones for a piece of land was tormenting Arjun, he thought about renouncing everything and becoming a beggar. To which Sri Krishna informs him about the transmigration of soul and how soul is immortal and body is perishable. Arjun's one of the major concerns were about the downfall of clans as it will spread sinful activities within the clans across generations thereby annihilating dharmic values. At this time, he forgot that even the rule of an oppressor kills the dharma and its people with rise in crimes committed with pride. Also, according to his Kshatriya dharma, he should fight the battle enjoined with his duty with righteousness. If he fails in performing his duty, then he will incur sin along with the loss of glory and an image of a coward will be formed. Since uh, senses are controlled by mind, which in turn is controlled by intellect, and this intellect is governed by Atman for his spiritual advancements, Sri Krishna asks Arjun to conquer his lower self, that is senses, mind and intellect, with his higher self, that is Atman, and kill this enemy of craving, as the problem was not of knowledge, but of not conquering the lower self. Arjun inquires Sri Krishna why he was urging him to perform karma, even though Gyan for him was superior to karma. Sri Krishna informs him that Gyan Yoga is for a Samkhya Yogi. The men of uh, contemplation and Karma Yoga is for a Karma Yogi, the men of actions. Arjun is advised to perform Karma Yoga as according to Shastras, it is his Kartavya Karma and performing an action is better than inaction. The best method is to perform Karma as a Yagya. As unlike any other action, it does not uh, cause any bondage due to its nature of detachment. This uh, kartavya karma can be identified according to the guna or quality of a person uh, he is born with. Since a person's nature compels him to indulge in actions best suited to their guna, a person should not abandon them even if they find issues within them. It is best better to die while uh, performing one's duties than others as it is perilous. Every person has a divine expression existing within. Deviation from own real nature or swabhava born of guna is losing the intention of the spirit within us, which is responsible for guidance, aspiration, and endeavor. 
there are two positions in this discourse the first position of arjun who is ready to renounce his duty and the second position of shri krishna who is motivating him to perform his karma however not through any path of his choice for the sake of righteousness shri krishna thus introduces him to the two paths of liberation the paths of renunciation of works karma ka sanyas and unselfish performance karma yoga where a karma yogi neither hates nor desires for anything and should always be considered a sanyasin for he is free from the dualities of human nature and easily gets liberated from the bondage of this world due to ease karma yoga is better than karma sanyas as he appears to be enjoying all the pleasures suffering etc but in real he has mastered himself and is merely meditating while performing all the karmas by staying unaffected by them also by performing actions with detachment the chain of karma karma phal is broken the sense of agency is removed no fruits are desired no attachment is present resulting in only bearing the fruits of previous karma and not the formation of new ones if arjun chooses to follow this path then he will neither gain any merits demerits uh, no pleasure pain fame insults in war nor get pleasure happiness sadness after winning it arjun realizes the yoga which shri krishna describes to be impractical due to the nature of manas which is restless fickle lack solid foundations in the foundation is impetuous obstinate strong and is exceedingly difficult to control however one who wishes to attain yoga work with renunciation is a means for them and who has attained the yoga serenity is the means this also means self becomes a friend to a yogi as it frees the body itself by alleviating it from its lower state of faction to its higher state of spirituality and self realization and is an enemy to a non yogi harmony is a crucial factor impacting both external environment as well as internal self internal harmony is the state of sthir buddhi in a person achieved when a person attains paramatman in samadhi which is discarding of all the desires of mind and reaching contentment at soul level the chain of action is defined as quote and quote when a man dwells in his mind on objects of sense attachment to them is produced from attachment springs desire and from desire comes anger from anger arises bewilderment from bewilderment loss of memory and from loss of memory the destruction of intelligence and from the destruction of intelligence he perishes it was it is the same phenomena that uh, and through which arjun was going in the battlefield when he was dwelling with the objects of sense that is um, warriors actions depend on the state they are performed in this is the reason there is a wide difference in the actions of a non righteous and righteous and of an ignorant and awakened soul the ignorance is to believe in the temporary to be eternal and um, getting grieved or delighted for them while acting accordingly this is the reason shri krishna asks arjun to fight instead of grieving for the perishable bodily forms of the eternal and timeless atman also one can only control their actions and has no right over their fruits therefore the motive should be the actions and there shouldn't be any attachment or inaction and these actions should uh, should be performed with evenness of mind that is you uh, with mind focused on brahma and submitting all actions to him the bondages of actions shall be no more the mind uh, will be set on renunciation the person will be freed from this mortal world and will attain paramatman atman is indestructible incombustible that which cannot be wetted and withered which is unbreakable all pervading cannot be altered is immovable and eternal also beings manifest only in between that is from birth to death and otherwise they are unmanifest making it meaningless to lament about their death this also brings into light that for an atman the unmanifest state the unmanifest state is a natural state and acquiring a physical body is merely temporary state which appears to be permanent due to maya to arjun's question shri krishna answers brahma as a supreme highest power which is indestructible self is the soul's essential nature referred as adhyatma and the creative force that brings all the beings into existence is called karma mutable nature that is creation destruction birth death is the basis of whole nature creation or physical manifestation cosmic spirit is the basis of divine elements foundation of all sacrifices in the body that is a pure awareness within all is myself 
with karma being the reason of cosmic evolution it becomes the natural order of manifestation even at individual levels thereby leaving no reason why individuals should not perform karma it is also this manifestation due to which karma with attachments uh, result in bondages and if performed carelessly then in a vicious cycle of uh, karma karma phal that would be difficult to break hence it is advised to perform nishkam karma with focus on brahma shri krishna at one point remembers uh, uh, that uh, at one point informs arjun about uh, the concept of rebirth and how he remembers his previous words and like arjun who is unaware making the impact of souls learnings from all these words greater while enabling him to access the complete potential of human body and mind shri krishna explains brahma swarup which generates awareness in arjun about the ultimate truth and where he also states himself to be the mind among senses and consciousness among beings this expression reflects how everyone is surrounded by and formed from brahma yet fails to realize the same Shri Krishna, Divin- Shri Krishna's divinity indicates the scale of Arjun's worries. This means, as a warrior, Arjun should aim to be the best warrior by not only excelling in his warfare, uh, but also by excelling in the virtues, emotions, decision making, and art of using them at right time and right place. This is the reason why Arjun's dilemma, conflicts, and state are meaningless as they are simply misplaced, as it is fruitless to care for those who have purposefully chosen the war for material gains. it should also be noted that the name shri krishna takes for his identity as divinity in those categories is of the most qualified which also indicates that however reputed or learned the warriors in this war were they had not achieved enough to attain the divinity existing within them sanyas or renunciation is attainable through yoga and is an act of detachment which leads to selflessness and eventually to parmatma it is a highly disciplined activity that frees someone from self selfish purposes bondages attachments desires and controlled by sensory organs it is this quality of renunciation that shri krishna requests arjun to cultivate arjun is a mere instrument and is guilty of wild presumptions of being a doer he can either fight and claim its rewards by attaching the karma bandhan or perform his kshatriya duty by performing a by becoming a karma yogi so that he does not attaches himself with any new karma since becoming a sinner was an important part of arjun's dilemma this path and knowledge enlightens him of how he shall not incur any sin while performing his duty dharma can be defined as the essence which is an inseparable and inherent quality of a thing natural order righteousness duty responsibilities it is a mode of being that causes the establishment of the mode of behavior when the conduct in is in conformity to the essential nature one acts in the right or dharmic way whereas when it is as uh, the essence it is against the essential nature one acts in a adharmic way the definition of righteousness is determined by the cosmic and moral order that this is the reason shri krishna exclaims that he will come again and again for the establishment of righteousness Arjun's dilemma therefore opens with a very normal human concern, where a family is about to be destroyed as a result of its avoidable wrong actions. But it grows from family to social concerns to nature's truth to spiritual truths, and how nature and spirituality is intertwined and impacts a human based upon his previous karma. Arjun's dilemma in Shrimad Bhagavad Gita takes from in the early troubles to a spiritual solutions and the ultimate yoke of an atman to parmatma while accepting that one is responsible for own actions not others thank you